Let go. Whoops. Let go. I bought a keytar, so now what? Okay. Uh, mandatory adjusting the camera for six fucking minutes. Anyway, we're gonna be doing keytar in our pajamas today. Because the point of keytaring is that you have freedom. And today we have the freedom to keytar in our jimmy jammies. Now, for somebody who doesn't know, I own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine guitars. So when I talk about the guitarist, that's okay, I can talk about the guitarist. But there's a lot of hate that hits on the guitar, so we're gonna, um, be not like other keyboardists. What the f fuck am I trying to say? Jesus Christ. We're gonna talk about a thing that I think everybody who likes musical instruments does, but especially guitarists. Which is where you decided that you want a guitar, so you buy a guitar, and then realize you don't know where to go from there. And the thing about, like, buying a guitar and not knowing where to go from there is that I just, like... So I'm like, oh, I bought this guitar and I don't know what to do with it. Uh... Cool, now I know sort of how to play the guitar. But, I got this. I got this guitar, and I open it up, put batteries in it, and lights up. Well, it lights up. So you bought your guitar, you didn't really think, oh, what else do I need? And now you have a lamp. Now you have a $600 lamp. I hope you didn't buy the AX1. So cool! There's no sounds in it. There's no speakers for it. There's no output jack. You just have to figure out where you go from there. And so, for where do we go from there, we are gonna remove the camera from the tripod and never be able to get it back on ever again. The first thing you should do when you want to know where you go from getting a, um, guitar, check all your musical instruments. I don't know how many musical instruments you have, but you should check all of them. Those ports. It's big round ones. That is on the back of an old keyboard that I don't want to pull out right now because my life is already a mess. I don't need to make a bigger one. So that's the good old five pin MIDI port. And you can check your keytar and see if it has a good old five pin MIDI port. MIDI is not proprietary at all. So, so when you find a five pin MIDI port and it says MIDI out, you can buy any five pin MIDI cable and plug it into MIDI in and they can communicate. What they actually say is another question, but they can speak to each other. But we're gonna have one word real fast about how to be an adult. So you have to buy MIDI cables. If your guitar has a five pin MIDI out, you're going to need to buy a MIDI cable. We're gonna go into USB MIDI in a minute. But if it's got a five pin MIDI out and that's only the thing it's got, you need to buy yourself a MIDI cable. And let's go over the fact that since nobody else in the world is going to take the keytar seriously, we have to take the keytar seriously. So don't go buying cables that look like this. See that? That looks like a computer cable. You're just getting... Look at that molded plastic housing. That looks lame. Don't buy those. Be an adult. Buy these fuckers. And they've got the same weight of cord that you get with a guitar quarter inch instrument cord. Buy these. Be an adult. Don't. Nobody's taking the. the, 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 the. Nobody's taking the guitar seriously, so we have to take it even more seriously. Don't buy child's cables. Don't buy computer cables. Get a real instrument cable, because this, despite what everybody wants to think, is a real instrument. Yeah! 
So, um, where were we? Five pin MIDI out, and you find something with five pin MIDI in? Just get a cable and plug them together and see what happens. This cable was three dollars. That's the other reason why you shouldn't buy this shit. Get a real cable. They're cheap. My super long MIDI cable that I use used on Cameron before he decided that being underwater meant he wasn't gonna work anymore. Thanks, Cameron. Um, I think it was like 15 bucks. So buy a real instrument cord, guys. Buy a real MIDI cord. Anyway, so now that you have your real MIDI cord like a goddamn adult, you can basically just plug anything that says MIDI out into anything that says MIDI in and see what happens. One of the beauties of MIDI is that it's extremely difficult to get a computer virus on your keytar from a keyboard that you bought in 1992. So you can just plug them together and see if they work. Anyway, if you got excited and you bought your keytar and now you can't do anything with it because it's um, a MIDI controller and you didn't find any MIDI ports on your keyboards, well, that's a bummer, isn't it? This is the cheapest tone box that you can purchase on Amazon.com. It was, I think, 60 bucks. It goes out through an eighth inch headphone jack and it comes with a five pin to eighth inch MIDI adapter, which unfortunately does look like a child's toy, but you know, you can't win them all. So sometimes you're gonna run into things that have eighth inch MIDI in, which you can see it says MIDI in right there. Uh, and the thing is MIDI in, or eighth inch MIDI is a little bit different than a uh, five pin MIDI, because even though it's transmitting the same signals and you can use a generic aux cord for it, not all manufacturers of eighth inch MIDI have assigned the MIDI signals that you would be getting through this cable onto the same rings. Come on, Korg, Roland, get your shit together. So anyway, if you've got a good ol' get one of these, and then you can just plug that five pin into your five pin and use whatever sounds you want. Okay, so then whatever sounds are on this you can play with. And, and the, so the upside of this is that it cost you 60 bucks, you plugged it into your computer speakers that you had a while ago and you're making music, you're at least making noise, which puts you ahead of where you were 20 minutes ago now, doesn't it? The downside of this is that you uh, are limited to whatever's in there and you're limited to whatever it's decided your presets mean. So for example, the drum pads on this, it's decided are just a major scale starting on C. Now you've spent, you know, $200 on your keytar, 200 to $1,000 on your keytar, and you spent 60 bucks on that little tone box. The tone box was great because you can just carry it around in your bag, and then if you need to check things on your keytar, you can plug headphones into it. Tonebox is also awful because you can't control what it thinks your keytar is doing, so you don't have a lot of control over your sound. You definitely don't have any control over your sound that isn't what it's assigned your keytar to. So, like here, it's decided that my pitch wheel is a ha or a full step. Why is my volume all the way down again? It's decided that my pitch wheel is a full step, even though I have it set in my presets to much higher than that. And it's decided that my volume switch, which I want to be on volume, is in fact modulation. You can't control what it thinks things do. So when you uh, plug it into this, this Keytar transmits percussion on channel 16, which is slightly non-standard. So if I set it to MIDI channel 10, which is the standard for where percussion should be... Oh shit. But the problem is that it will always transmit percussion on channel 16. And this box has no way of knowing that, because I cannot tell it what uh, channel to expect percussion on, so when I 
uh, turn it on to, say, style hard rock, and I start up the percussion, you can, you know, have some fun with it. So you can have some fun with that, but if you're trying to actually play through this for a live event or a show or something, you're gonna um, need something that gives you more control. That said, if you just bought a guitar and you just want to play it right now, that's a good thing to grab. I really like my little midi box. Uh, if you don't have a MIDI box or another instrument with MIDI in, like a keyboard or a synthesizer, now you're running into a problem. Because now your options are either get a synthesizer or plug it into your computer. Damn, camera has a battery life about 20 minutes when we're filming, but... Uh, I'm trying to remember where the fuck we were before I had to stop and charge the asshole thing. Um. You bought, you bought your guitar, and you, uh, don't have a synthesizer to run it through. You don't have that. So now you need, you need a computer. Something that lets you plug a 5-pin MIDI in on one end and a USB MIDI in on the other end. They make a lot of interfaces that are like a little box that you plug cables into. They make this, which I think was like five bucks. It has lights on it. It does things where like sometimes it won't receive the stop button on a key and it makes it stick. That's not a problem with the keytar, that's not a problem with the computer or the software, it's a problem with the interface. But you need a MIDI interface, this can run you anywhere from three to three hundred dollars. Um, find one that you like. And then you need something on your computer which is hopefully fast enough to run it. Before I had a MacBook, I used Cantabile. 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 I used Cantabile. Cantabile is designed for live performance. It's built so that when you press buttons, it goes. But it's not really designed for recording. I have been working with Plogbidule. Why can't we name these after things that exist? And it works similarly, it's a similar program for Mac. Um, both of those have uh, either free versions or trial versions, so you can mess around with them and see if you like what they're like. Um, and both of them have live versions that are super expensive. If I still had a Windows computer, I would be buying the $100 version of Cantabile, though, because it lets you just map everything, and that's really cool. But right now, we're not talking about wanting to map everything. Right now, we're talking about you just bought this keytar and you want it to make noise. So, Ableton comes with uh, instruments in it. I just recently uninstalled Ableton off my hard drive because I have a 120 gig hard drive and it was like a 14 gig program, so I just didn't have the space for it. Especially when Ableton is really designed around recording and I'm not looking for recording. And if I want something that doesn't quite do what I want, I already can't uninstall GarageBand off this computer because it's a MacBook. So if you've got a MacBook, you do have GarageBand. GarageBand is really handy because you plug this end to one end, and you plug this into the other end, and then you type command space G-A-R and hit enter. And then it whines that you're not connected to the internet and it can't download all the extra instruments and you're like, bitch, I got a 120 gig hard drive, of course I can't download all the extra instruments. Then you turn on your keytar and then you can do this. This is why you want a MIDI interface that costs more than $3. Again, if you just bought the keytar and you want it to make noise, it's a pretty easy setup if you've got a computer that's already got the software on it. See, this is why we're doing pajama keytar today. 
because I'm fucking tired. Um, the downsides of plugging your keytar into your computer is that you get option paralysis, where you run into instruments that you didn't even know existed, and now instead of being able to write a song, you are sitting there going, look, I can make it sound like a harp. Did I uninstall the harp is the real question. Uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. Um... Anyway, and then you can't get your YouTube video finished because you're too busy dicking around on, uh, um, you're too busy dicking around on GarageBand going, ooh, I wonder what classic clean guitar sounds like. I wonder what electric buzz lead sounds like. And again, if you just bought your guitar and you're just making it make noise, that's awesome because you have all these things you can mess around with. So there's sort of your, your potential options of, I bought a keytar, now what do I do? Uh, the, the number one thing is that once you get your keytar, you need to figure out how you personally play the keytar. And once you've figured out how you play the keytar, uh... Ah, sorry. And in order to figure out how you play the keytar, you have to play the keytar. And... So if you bought a keytar because you want a keytar, but you don't really have an idea of where and what you want to use it for, um, those are a couple options you have to figure that out. Um, you know, plug, check and plug it into things that you've already got, and then if that doesn't work, try other stuff. But I think the first thing you should do is figure out how to set it up as fast as you can and get to playing. Because the more you play it, the more you're going to discover where the limits of your technology are. And once you've discovered where the limits of your technology is sitting, then you start discovering, you know, who you are as a person or something. Uh, okay, so my fucking camera battery has died twice on me while trying to film this vlog. Um, and so we're just going to do the rest of this handheld. Um, oh, I bet I could fit it on this shelf. There we go, everything's crooked, everything sucks. We're gonna just do this for a minute. I wrote it down, I wrote down what we need. Um, uh, I think where I was going was that you just um, get whatever is the... whatever you feel you need to figure out how you play. Uh, to figure out what you want. If you already know what your sound is, then you don't have to go through that experimentation phase because you're always in that experimentation phase. I should film some end slate for these, because I'm never very good at knowing how to end these. Uh, but I guess I can just stutter about how I don't know how to end these until images pop up around my head, and then you can click here or here, and there you go. There's a... let's pretend that was a fucking video. I need to buy additional batteries for this camera so that I can keep them charged and when the battery dies, just swap it out, because the battery life on this thing is stupid small. But okay then.